Oh, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's little birds chirping right outside my garage door. <laughs> it's very happy. Okay. Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we are talking about a climate disaster from Earth's distant past, the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. One quick channel thing before we get started with the science. Um, I did set up a, a buy me a coffee page thing. Um, the link is in the description. So if you are so inclined and able to help support my science communication habit, I, I would deeply appreciate it. Shilling is so uncomfortable. Today we're going to talk about two main things, what this event was and also why it's interesting beyond just like, oh my gosh, this crazy thing happened to the earth a long time ago and it's super cool. Because uh, there's actually a lot we can learn from this climate event and it matters to stuff today. But let's start with sort of what the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, often abbreviated P. E-T-M, but I don't know how to pronounce that acronym other than like PETM, but I'm just going to call it by its full name probably and be obnoxious. Using the methods we talked about in the last couple videos, scientists have been able to recreate this temperature history of the earth, right? Um, using our mollusks and other climate and temperature analogs, we can learn a lot. And so when people put that whole timeline together, right, we get this, this plot. I think I've shown it to you guys before, but there's a link to the source in the description. And people noticed there was this weird thing going on right here. Either I'm pointing to it or editing Maddie put an arrow in something like that. So notice that big spikes. We have a huge increase in temperature over a fairly short period of time, which looks like just this spike on the graph. Um, so the first thing that you would do if you were a scientist is look at that is, is not trust it. That's the first thing I would do. I would double check my data analysis and triple check it and have a friend check it for me because um, that that looks really odd and before we go digging into it we should make sure that our data analysis was correct and that it's not sort of an artifact it's representing something real that happened in Earth's past so people did that right it was all double checked and turns out yeah this spike is real so what you see is temperature increasing five to nine degrees Celsius above sort of what the normal was for that period of time. So it shoots up that five to nine degrees in about 6,000 years. So geologically speaking on a geologic time scale, 6,000 years is the blink of an eye. So it shot up over 6,000 years and then took about 150,000 years to slowly go back down to the sort of normal levels for that 58 million years ago time frame. Naturally, scientists were pretty curious about what's going on here, but there's nothing that we know of that would cause this. There's sort of not a natural climate cycle that causes this. And also, as far as we can tell, this is the only time in Earth's history when we've had this huge spike. So this is a really interesting event. And when people dug into that more, they found that atmospheric carbon also shot up in that 6,000 year time frame. So it looks like over that like 6,000 years when temperature was just increasing like crazy, um, about 2,000 gigatons of carbon was shot into the atmosphere. Um, how that happened is an active area of research, um, but I found a good paper from 2017 in Nature that suggests it was volcanic activity. Um, so I linked, uh, I linked that paper in the description if you want to learn more about it, but that's definitely an active 
area of research of what caused the carbon. Because our climate analogs can tell us that there was more carbon dumped into the atmosphere, but they don't tell us how that carbon got there or what process got it there. The other really cool thing about this is that it definitely looks like it was the carbon increase that led the temperature increase. Because scientists have been able to demonstrate that it looks like it's the carbon increase that led the temperature increase, this is the best Earth analog we have to modern day anthropogenic, which is science speak for man-made climate change. Let's talk for a minute, and I'm gonna be a unicorn, but how this event affected uh, the, the flora and fauna, the plants and animals of this period of time. Um, so this is, we're talking over a, a long period of time, over like 150,000 years. Um, and where this event has been studied in terms of its effect on um, plant and animal life is pretty central. A lot of work has been done in a particularly good rock place in Wyoming, <laughs> right? So just, just keep that in mind that these things are, um, it's been this specific period of time has been studied in a like geographically limited sense. But overall, what it looks like is that um, over this period of time, like mammals got smaller um, because food was less available. And there's some theories about like how uh, the increased temperature affects um, animals' ability to like absorb nutrients from plants, which was really, really cool. But I was, I was reading some of that, but I'm not a biologist, so I, I wasn't getting all of it. Um, I, I linked an article um, in the description that's that got more data uh, if you're as fascinated by that as I am. What does any or all of that mean for modern climate change? Well, I want to briefly chat about that number I threw out earlier of 2,000 gigatons of carbon. So we're thinking that that's about 2,000 gigatons released into the atmosphere over, say, 6,000 years. So that means it's releasing about a third of a gigaton of carbon a year, right? About. <laughs> um, well, as of 2019, global average carbon emissions, so the carbon that we're adding to the atmosphere, was about 35 gigatons a year. So we're, we're currently adding to the atmosphere 100 times as much carbon a year as this pretty catastrophic event from 58 million years ago. So we, we know it's having, we know that man-made climate change is a thing that's happening. Um, we know there's no natural process that's going to add carbon to the atmosphere at the rate that humans are doing it. And then also think about how long it took the atmosphere to recover from the Paleo-Eocene, Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. It took it 150,000 years to recover from something that happened over 6,000. It might take the atmosphere thousands or tens of thousands of years to recover from what we're doing to it. So the quicker we stop, the better. Okay, team, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for hanging out. Um, and I hope learning about this event um, from Earth's past maybe gets you some better understanding of why climate change is such a worrying thing. I hope you and those you care about are well. Please like, subscribe, be kind, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>